I want to buy a new amp and I want something that can be really loud but also really quiet. Maybe something I could plug headphones into so I could practice late at night when I should be asleep. And maybe something that can do a Fender clean and a Marshall overdrive and, and some other tones as well. Something I can infinitely play around with, maybe with some recording software, with USB connectivity and MIDI connectivity and you know, something that also fits in my gig bag as well. Mm. Oh well, I wish. Anyway, back to work. Oh, why's Tom left this box here? Let's have a look inside. Oh my God, what is this? It's Amp 1, Amp 2, and Amp 3. We've got to get these plugged in. Hi, I'm Sam from Guitar Village and today we are checking out the new Amp series from Blackstar. We're going to plug each one of these in, see how they sound and see how each one differs as well. And let's be honest, why you need one. Let's get started. Okay, so first up we have the Amped One pedal. This is the smallest and most simplistic pedal in the lineup. You've got some really great options on there that we're going to talk about once I've plugged it in. On the back here we've got our ins, um, we've got an effects loop uh, option there as well, and you've got your speaker outputs too, plus these two really handy pedal power outputs as well, so you can really run this from your pedal board. On the side here we've got a DI out to go straight into the desk or you know, your recording setup and the headphone socket. Let's plug it in and have a listen. Okay, so we've got the amp one plugged in now. I'm going to do some kind of messing around with it. We've got it plugged into this 112 cab. I'm using this great uh, custom 2408, so we've got some really cool options. I'm going to run the, uh, the neck pickup on a single coil and the bridge on a humbucker, so you can hear some really good tones we're going to get from this from clean to pretty saturated. Um, we've also got an output on there, which is going to our interface as well, so we're going to hear some of the direct sounds and some of the cab sounds as well, so you can decide which you prefer. So this is their kind of... First up, their clean sound. This is the USA setting on the preamp. So you can mess around. You've got some different responses on here. So that was 6L6. You can go 6V6. And uh, EL84, which I guess is kind of more of a, a voxy thing. You've got uh, EL84, more of the Marshall sound, and then KT88, which I think is kind of high watt Marshall territory anyway. Um, you've got a master volume here, and then you've got power output. I was running that on the 20 watt setting. You can drop it down to one watt, which is gonna be great if you wanna push the, the power amp section on there. Or you can go to 100 watt if you want kind of big clean headroom as well. Right, let's knock that back to 20 watt. Now the UK setting on here, this is kind of more Marshall-esque as I'm sure you guessed already. Okay, so that's, uh, that's single coil neck pickup. Let's try it on the humbucker. Now let's trim that round a bit. Let's go for uh, an EL84 sound. I'm loving the trim arm today for some reason on this. I think it works really well. Okay, so that's on the UK setting. There is also a flat response, which you're meant to use with the linear response there to get, I think, the most transparent sort of preamp tone you can from that. Which isn't bad, I think that really is designed if you've got, you know, uh, maybe something you want to run it into or something you want to run into it to kind of keep it sounding pretty much the same, just making it louder. Now, some other features on here which are pretty cool. So let's go back to our clean sound again for this. Um, okay. So you've got a separate reverb with a, an on and off control there. And if you hold the, uh, the reverb button down, it kind of does that freeze thing. You've also got a preset option, so you can set your controls wherever you want them on here, and then you hold the preset button down and that will store your preferred settings. So I guess you can kind of have like two amps in a box. Okay, so in terms of ins and outs on this pedal as well, on the back here, 
We've got a two speaker out, so you can run it into a, an eight ohm or a 16 ohm cab. Um, you've got your guitar input there and an effects input uh, as well. So if you want to run any of your kind of modulation effects, things like that, uh, after the preamp, you can do that. You actually get like a, a Y cable with it as well. Now, other things on this side, you've got a cab sim output and the headphone output. And there's three options on there which you know, give you different sounds. You can actually use the software online and you know, choose your own, oh sorry, upload your own uh, cab sims as well if you've got one that you prefer the sound of and kind of really mess around with it there. I'll give you a quick demo actually between um, the sound of the cab sim and the sound of the actual cab that we've mic'd up with an SM57 there. <laughs> Now you're going to hear uh, Cab Sim 1, there's three options, so this is the first of them. Now let's switch that over to number 2. Anyway, let's check out the Amp 2. This is the Amp 2, and I'm sure you've guessed by now, this is a bigger box than the white one we were checking out, and it's the same with the Amp 3 as well. They're both bigger boxes. Now, this one is really interesting because it's kind of like the next step on from the white one, although they do slightly different jobs in terms of the amplification sections. Um, this one has got a bit more on it in terms of you've got a drive section, you've got modulation, delay, reverb, and you've also got a tuner built into this as well. So this really is kind of like a bit like your Swiss Army knife in terms of, you know, gig bag essentials almost. Now, instead of having the, uh, the cab sim on the side there, they've put the outputs on the back, so everything is fully controllable on this side. We've got uh, two power outputs for your pedals. You've got a MIDI in and a MIDI through. Um, same connectivity in terms of the speaker outs, an 8 and a 16 ohm cab. You've got your guitar input, you've got your kind of uh, amp uh, output there and a send and return effects loop on there as well. Uh, plus your headphone output and a level control as well. So. This thing could be really, really good for you. All right, so we have now got this hooked up to our 112 cab as per last time, and we've got the cab sim, uh, sorry, the XLR running out from the cab sim out on the back there. Something that I haven't mentioned actually when we were just checking out the last one is that you can actually run this without a speaker cab. So if you literally just want to record or put your headphones on, you can do that. So at the moment, I've got this set to uh, a USA sort of Fendery clean tone on there. <laughs> So not bad straight away. Let's put some reverb on. I'd certainly prefer it to be a little bit wet. I'm not too much of a dry guy. Quite like the reverb on this. So um, before we get into everything else, actually, because I think for a lot of people, you know, messing around with the reverb could be one of the first things you do after you kind of set your chord tone. So at the moment, I've got this set on the plate reverb setting. Um, it's got quite a short kind of decay time, so goes away pretty quick, but the level's set high. Set that for unity first. Let's go for a spring reverb. You can hear with the time turn up, it just goes on a little bit longer, but the effect isn't quite as dramatic because the level's turned down. It's a nice sounding room reverb on there. Let's turn the decay all the way up and the level down a bit and go back to that spring again. Okay, so let's move on from the reverbs then. So let's go back to the amplifier. So at the moment, like I said, I had it set to a Fendery type clean on there. Let's check out the UK setting. So that's kind of more of your, your Marshall-esque type sounds. So that is uh, still single coil on the, uh, the neck there, which um, it still sounds pretty gainy, you know, whereas if we knock it back to the bridge, Definitely getting some of those Marshall tones out of there. This one has a, a third option, the classic, which is based on uh, one of the Black Star ones. Pretty gainy as well. 
Now, if we head over to the next section, this is like having a separate drive pedal in there. So you've got the on off switch for it there. You've got a, a boost function, a drive function, and a fuzz function as well. So you can kind of use this either as a solo boost if you always have your amp set pretty gainy, or you can just use this as having just like a nice posh kind of drive pedal in there. So with that off. That's pretty nice sounding overdrive. Then the boost function on there, which I guess is really just to make you sound louder. And then the fuzz setting, which I think a lot of you are going to like as well. pretty good sounding fuzz. Now let's move on. The modulation section on here, so um, we've got kind of four options. You've got a chorus and flanger, tremolo and phaser all in one. Um, you can choose however you want to have them set up. So there's the chorus. Let's get into some flanger territory. And the tremolo, which I think if you're running the amp clean, might be quite a nice effect if you really want to get like a fender kind of setup between the, uh, the reverb, the amp and the modulation there. It's a pretty deep sounding tremolo on there, and you've got a phaser for kind of, you know, some uh, some kind of more kind of chewy effects, I guess. And a delay too, so this thing is really flexible. If you add that in with that fuzz, oh, you get lots of noise too. That's pretty damn good. Um, so on top of that, so on top of those incredible kind of amp settings, you know, your drive, delay and reverb units and the modulation as well, there's also a built-in tuner. You just hold down these two panels at the same time and you've got a tuner built in too. I mean, how incredible is that? Okay, the last one we're going to check out is the Amp 3. Now, this really is more like three amps in a box, whereas the red one was like an amplifier that has some pedals as well. They've got a, a pretty simple layout, but what they have got is Blackstar's ISF, which changes the frequency response and just the overall feel of the amp, which is great for some of the overdrive tones as well. It's got a clean channel, which has a warm and a bright setting. You've also got uh, light and dark options on the reverb. You've got a presence control, master output. Um, same response as the last one with the EL84, EL34 and the 6L6 power section. You can go to the crunch channel, which has two options, crunch and super crunch on there. And that's where I really think the ISF comes in um, with the drive tones on this, because that will give you, you know, kind of a completely different sound, you know, the overall sound and feel. Um, the overdrive section is more your high gain section. So crunch would be like low to mid gain. Overdrive is kind of like mid to high. 
You've got a boost option on here, so you can either run it as a pre-boost or a post-boost. So either if you want to add more gain into the, uh, the mix or you want to make any of these sounds louder. And it's got reverb on there as well. Now, one thing you can do with this, um, you can either have it in manual mode or you can have it in a preset mode. So you set your controls where you want and hold the button down where you want to save it on which channel. So it's a really smart one. In terms of the back panel on this, this is exactly the same as the red one. So nothing to speak about there. Anyway, let's get it plugged in. All right, so we've got the AMP3 plugged in. Now, at the moment, we're going to start straight away on the clean channel. We're going for the warm, uh, clean sound. So that's one watt. Let's not set up to 20 watts. That's more like it. So it's a pretty pleasant clean sound straight away. Let's put some reverb on. So with the reverb, you've got two settings. You've got light and dark on there. So we were listening to the light just then. Let's check out the dark. There's the dark and back to the light. So it's a little bit subtle, but there's definitely some difference in there. Actually, you can hear it a lot more with the reverb control turned right up. Now, enough about reverb. Let's check out the bright setting on the clean there. Now let's move on. So we were kind of, let's move on to the crunch channel next because I think the clean channel, a lot of these controls are pretty self-explanatory. You've got, you know, bass control, middle, treble, an ISF, which it kind of goes between an American sound and a British sound. I think I've got that the right way around. I can never remember with that. Now the crunch channel. Let's set that up. So let's go EL34 on there. We're going to stick to the 20 watt mode. We're going to stick to crunch. Let's get that gain up a bit. Uh, volume. Bad, really. I mean, I've just kind of rolled the volume back a tiny bit on there and gone to the next single core, and it really cleans up nicely. Let's take a look at the overdrive section next. This is kind of really like your proper high gain section. Okay, so that's pretty good straight out of the box. So that was running on EL uh, 34 mode, 20 watts. You can obviously make that louder. And you've also got this boost option on here as well. So if we run that as a, a preamp boost, you can just make that even more gainy. Right, so there was the uh, the boost mode there. Now, what you can also do um, 
with the boost. So I was running it as a, uh, a pre-boost, so that's going into the gain. You can also run it post, so you could have it as a, a solo boost as well, just to make any one of these sounds louder. And on top of that, so you've got some power amp shaping there. You can go from 1 watt 20 to 100, just like the other two. And uh, response-wise, you've got EL84, EL34, and a 6L6 response. So this thing is going to be pretty flexible, and it's really more like 3 amps in one. All right, so there's some of the features and sounds you're going to get with this new amp series from Blackstar. To be honest with you, in the room, that sounded incredible. I thought the cab sim sounded pretty good as well. So if you want something you can kind of turn up to a gig, record with, play at home practice, you know, plugged in with headphones or, you know, low volumes going through a small speaker cab, direct into your PC, honestly, these things are going to be really, really good. In terms of how I feel about each one, I actually couldn't tell you which one I preferred. Usually I kind of get a vibe on which one I'd kind of want. Maybe the black one, just because I really like the way each of the amp sounds are on there, you know, from clean to like super high gain. But to be honest with you, they all do a different job. So when we talk about the white one, that really is for you know, someone that just wants an amplifier sound. Maybe for someone that, you know, it's kind of like me where you turn up to a gig, you have your amp, you plug all your pedals into the front of the amp, you plug your guitar into the front of the pedal board and you go, that might be more suited to you. The red one, I think, is great if you want to keep it as like a, a gig bag essential. So if you want to turn up with one thing, put it on the floor, plug it into a cab or just direct into the desk and just play and have, you know, still a lot of the options you're going to get from a regular pedal board. And with the tuner built in, I think that's pretty cool. However, if you want, you know, three different amps in a box with the flexibility of the solo boost if you need it and a really nice reverb as well, the black one is a great option too. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I really love getting to know a little bit more about these pedals and you should definitely check them out. All the links will be in the description below. Thanks for watching.